Were you an athlete, school teacher, or maybe worked in a corporate world? Our careers, they tend to be the way that we identify ourselves. Now what happens when that identity is taken from you? We found ours in real estate. Now let us help you find yours on a free agent real estate investing podcast. Starting now. Welcome to the free agent real estate. Real Estate Investing Podcast. Oh, man. My name's Stratton Brown. And hey, my name's Michael Butler, man. Thank you guys for tuning in, man. It's been a man, while. Thank you, guys. We've been off for a little bit. We've both been super busy. Man, I guess that's, that's a good thing. Right? It's a good thing, bro. But some quick housekeeping stuff. I'll let you start, bro, since you got the, what's it called? <laughs> you see it down there? Hey, guys. Hey, so if you want to analyze your deals like a pro, Right. It's something that we've used to take our business to the next level. Um, go to uh, mainlinecomps.com. Um, there you're going to be able to get a seven day free trial uh, to pull lists, skip trace, drive for dollars, whatever it is that you need. You need to do to uh, take your business to the next level. And then if you guys are looking for any type of virtual assistance, go to callmagicians.com and they will take care of you. Care of you. Bro, how you been? What have you been up to for these last couple of weeks? Oh, man, to see what we, was Thursday. Yep. So, uh, I mean, if you guys follow me on Instagram, you guys know that uh, me and my wife, we started um, 75 hard. Um, I think we called you when we first said that we were thinking about doing it. Yeah. Well, not even not even that. Huh? I think uh, I told her that I was uh, I had seen. it. I was like, you know what? I need to get my focus back. I'm looking for something. I can kind of dial it in. Just kind of, you know, just be rough and just be grimy with it in a way, you know, Um. And so I told her about 75 hard. She's like, oh, she had just seen it, I guess, on TikTok or something like that. And you guys know she just had a baby in January. So um, she was like, yeah, I just seen it. I was thinking about doing it, too. So I was kind of like, fuck, because, <laughs> you know, what I mean, it, uh, depending on the response, you know, I, I probably would have found a way to back out of this some way or another. But since she had already knew about it, she was like, well, call Stratton and tell him that we starting on this day. And I was like, damn. So that's what we did, man. So what we are, I believe we're on day 11. Today's day 11. It's been fun though. I, I've enjoyed it. How how do you? F what's changed for you since you've been doing it? Um, <laughs> it was really uh, adjusting to uh, the time that we do the podcast, right? Prioritizing things. Um, but for the most part, dude, um, I would say just being more conscious of, of what I'm putting in my body, right? When they talk about you know you, you're kind of finding your own diet. Our diet has always been when we, whenever we're ready to lose some weight. Uh, we don't go zero carb, but we definitely reduce the carbs that we are eating um, and zero sugars, man. Um, obviously, there's sugar and fruit and stuff like that. But uh, we're talking about candy bars and, you know, all that good stuff. But for the most part, dude, it, it's it's not it's not life altering for me because it's not something it's I'm very um, I have an, a, an obsession, a obsessive personality in a sense of when I when I have a purpose or when I'm driving towards something. So I've been there before, hence when we started this business, um, when we were still playing. So me being able to dial in my focus and really just cut everything else off like that, that that's actually that comes pretty easy for me when there's when there's something that I'm, I'm, tra I'm chasing. For me, bro, it showed me because I'm the most unstructured person I know, probably besides you. Yeah, <laughs> it showed me um, the, what's it, the massive hole I have in my life as far as structure and discipline, because like, I became an entrepreneur, so I didn't have to have those two things. Yeah, and then here I am realizing, oh, bro, like you know, you you thought, but it's not that way at all. all right, like you you got to have structure, discipline, and all that, and that's why you find the integrator. And then the mm -hmm. time management, I think, was massive for me. Yeah, uh, organizing my day and knowing, like, getting in that random ass workout at yeah. two a.m. Yeah, before you go to bed. <laughs> yeah, um, <coughs> I guess that would be something. But again, it's it's kind of e it's easier because my wife does it with me. So, yeah. you know, now I don't feel like such an ass when I'm like, you know, it's, it's eight o'clock and or nine o'clock and I still got to get the second workout in. So I'm like, hey, we got I got to go on a walk, you know, so um, it's cool because we're, we're both pushing each, uh, each other towards that thing. And so um, we both kind of got in our own habits of, you know, when, when it comes to the water, um, we made it a rule in our house. TV doesn't come on until we finish reading our 10 pages. Um, and then that second workout is I mean, we, we've been wanting to get out with the kids and we haven't really taken the kids the last couple of times, um, but we, we wanted to be able to start taking family walks, 
And so it just worked out perfect. We were just like, you know what? Eight o'clock, it's cooling down. You know, the last couple of days have been 106. Um, so around eight o'clock, it cools down. We'll be able to get that, you know, 45 minute walk in. Um, but the kids was kind of holding us up. So <laughs> we started leaving them behind. Kids, 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 kids. Bro, and so what made you finally want to change? Because you, bro, you, you said you were the perfect weight. Who said that? You did. I never said that. We talked about it on the podcast. <laughs> I said I was the perfect weight. Never did I say that shit like that. You said I, I, knew, was I, I knew that shit wasn't perfect. Um, what was the question? <laughs> so, what changed your mind about you being the perfect weight? Um, I knew I wasn't the perfect weight. I knew my my thing is I I get heavy, um, but I have to get to a point to where I just feel disgusted about it. You know what I mean? If that makes any sense. Like, I can't just be like, oh, like, I mean, I know I'm getting bigger, but, you know, my shit still fit. I ain't really, you know, I ain't really tripping. You know, getting up ain't too hard. You know, I ain't breathing heavy in the middle of nowhere. You know, so once I start feeling signs or seeing signs like that, it starts making me feel some type of way. It, it's got to be some type of purpose for it for me. Like, I can't just be like, oh, I'm going to lose weight. You know what I mean? It's got to be something that I'm that I'm tired of. And I just that's just how I'm programmed. It's probably not a good way to be. <laughs> God forbid I guess too unhealthy. And then I'm, I'm playing defense. Right. So um, that's kind of what it was for me. Um, and at the same time with the business and, you know, deals were getting. They were starting to get spread apart a little bit more. And so for me, it's more of a focus thing. Um, it's it's more um, being sharp, um, getting back into the the hustle or just the, the grind element of it. And I know typically when I'm on a routine and I'm um my diet is good um i'm not as heavy typically those are those are those typically that's when i perform at the best which is no secret i guess 100 percent. one minute bro xeno's screaming i'll be right back <laughs> um okay so let's see who's all up in here man it's been two weeks since we went live and we definitely apologize for that um we were definitely trying to figure it out uh, it just wasn't working schedules changing and stuff like that so um, who's all in here, man? If you're in here, if it's your first time, go ahead and drop your name and all that stuff so we know who you are. Um, what's up, Chris, man? Missed you at the office, bro. Uh, I see you just bought the flip. You should definitely keep that green bathtub, bro. It's character, charm. We love it. Um, who else is in here? Also, if you guys got some questions, kind of what's going on in your business, uh, what are some questions that you may have on some issues that maybe you're coming across? Um, <laughs> yeah, of course, man. Hey, it, we got to do something with this girl just uh, laying laying on the side of the laying on the side of the office, man. It, it, it's getting crazy. Um, but yeah, kind of just tying in a little bit to the uh, seventy five hard guys. It um, it was definitely something that I, I thought it was dope because I have no problem really flipping a switch, um, and just going. So I thought it was pretty pretty dope that my wife decided um that she wanted to do it also. Cause then I don't seem like I'm such an ass sometimes when she's, um, when she's, you know, when like it was, it's been a couple of days, I think it was a time where her, her, her stomach just really started aching on her and it didn't look like she was going to make it. Cause she still had to get, um, she had to complete her workout and she was able to really just, you know, run it out, you know? And I thought that was so dope because, um, that's something for me where it's just like, Hey, if you got to crawl through the finish line, um, you know, what a roll, <laughs> whatever it is, like you just get it done. And I think that's just from 6 a.m. and stuff like that. When it came to football, you can always revert back to um, get it done by any means necessary. And so for my wife, um, I thought that was dope that she that she dug down and, you know, was able to find that. So she's been doing good. Um, so just tuned in. What's the basis of 75 hard? So um, it's supposed to be more of a, like a mental it's like a mental, I, I feel like it's less physical. You can make it as physical as you want. Um, but for me, I think it's more, it's mainly mental, a mental challenge. Um, and so you have to drink a gallon of water a day, um, read 10 pages. Um, audio books don't count, which that one I think was kind of difficult because I, I definitely love reading my audio books. And what happens when I try to physically read, I get tired <laughs> and I start falling asleep. Um, and then you have to get two 45 minute workouts in. One of them has to be outside. Um, and you have to take a picture and I may possibly be missing something else. I'm not hundred percent sure right now. Um, 
but the whole thing for me was really just to regain focus. I think in order to complete something like that for 75 days, um, and whether it be five or six tasks at, at hand, you really at all times got to make sure that you're marking off each task. Um, and you got to make sure you're taking that picture at the end of the day. Um, but where I see it paying off, <laughs> where I, what would you say I know about? That picture, bro. The picture, that picture man, is ridiculous. Every, every time times. I feel like I done did something, every time I feel like I done did something, man, I take that picture and my wife turned the phone around. On, you know what I mean? But, um, what I'm really starting to see, I think where where it is the mental part of it, and I guess physical, um, is because when you start getting on day 11, you know, and you're working out two times a day, what happens is that body, you know, as you start getting a little bit older, that body don't feel the same. And so you got to really think about it, two 45-minute workouts, you know, your feet, your feet are going to start killing you, you know. And so what's going to happen is just some of those workouts, you're really going to have to push through it, whether, you know, whether your feet hurt or wearing slides all day. <laughs> <laughs> wearing slides all day so that you can throw your shoes on later on. Um, just little things like that, having to adjust. Um, I wake up in the morning, I take Tylenol. <laughs> I take Tylenol with an allergy really? pill in the morning. You know, I'm just just little things that just make sure that my body, I'm able to recover my body for the uh, for the workouts later on that day. The So the picture for me was, it exposed my attention to detail. Okay. Right to where I failed twice in the 40s and 50s. Because really? I didn't, yeah. Because I didn't take a picture, but it's because like I'm, what's it called? It's the little things they say. It's bro, it's the little things, and right, I'm pushing. Things. I'm like, I fucking killed the day. I'm ready to go, and then cortisol shot. <laughs> yeah, wake up, take a cortisol shot. I'm good. <laughs> I don't, it was just the the picture for me got me twice, mm -hmm. and then I was my last day of seventy five hard. I was in North Carolina. And I had to go on a walk at 2 a.m. because I didn't, I was at that stealth storage mastermind and I didn't time yeah. block accordingly. And I procrastinated that workout, right? And so it exposes prioritizing things. So and does, your else. does your time, it doesn't switch if you're on the other side, you know what I mean? If you're, 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 say, on the East Coast and you're three hours ahead. So it, when you go to sleep, it's over. Oh, so it's not midnight? No. Oh, shit. <laughs> no, me and my wife have been trying to squeeze it in by midnight, bro. Like that's 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 been our thing, bro. That I mean, that's a push, and I'm I did my it's a, well, it's a push because we're like, oh, that's the day. Like you know what I mean? I feel like if I submit it, well, because we're using the app too. I love the app. The app so if good. I if you put it in on the app, you know, at one a.m., it's probably gonna like say that day eleven was incomplete. You just set the end time on the app of whatever you want it to be. My end time was four a.m. Because I I was legitimately up running like running in the in my backyard sprints Jeez. at two a.m. to get my outside workout in. And you're doing like crazy workouts. Like for anybody out there, like bro, I'm not doing nothing like insane in in a way of like sprints or like I'm not even going to the gym, bro. Like me and my family, we go, me and my wife, we go on a walk for forty five minutes, and then right afterwards, I'll hop right on the peloton. Well, I guess so. Peloton is crazy. Peloton. The peloton is crazy. That shit. That shit. My ass was hurting for a while. <laughs> that Peloton's feet, crazy. Bro. You know what I mean? So it, it burns out your legs, but I love it because I feel like when you're eating right, bro, when you hop on that thing for 45 minutes, that shit just shreds off you. I think I'm down. I'm down 17 pounds. Are you really? Congrats, yeah. bro. I mean, it's whatever. Congrats. Let's give Chris some love. Give What's Chris going on, Chris? Love, the hub. All right. So, so, um, Enough on 75 hard because as we as we're talking about 75 hard, um, these podcasts are going to start getting shortened down from an hour because I like again we got to be off this thing by eight o'clock. Family walk. <laughs> we got to get that family walk. So we talk about what's changed. It's being able to prioritize those things, right? You guys are important to me, but I'm I'm not going to be able to be here if my health ain't right. So that's a priority for me. <laughs> Today's episode, I is about making millions through your network and i truly think it's possible yeah to make millions just by knowing people building new business connections and everything else and i was at a post the other day i was like all of my business partners i've met at meetups and mm -hmm. with my network right mm -hmm. so this is a, turning into a, it'll be a really really big business by the end of the quarter yeah for us and i met you at a meetup bro that's that's wild, bro. It a hundred percent. That's it. <laughs> and I only found out who you were 
when I looked up what you know what kind of what wholesaling was when I was getting into real estate, and your name came up, and I'm like, man, who this light skin cat, bro? Like, I'm <laughs> you still have you still have that little wedding picture where you, where you know how you light skin dudes, you got the, your, your pants all down there, your ankles all exposed and shit. Yeah, that's, right, you had that on. I'm like, bro, this light skin dude. I'm like, oh, he played that state. I'm like, oh, he ain't too bad. Then he look like a little DB, but it's cool, right? <laughs> <laughs> and then that's how I reached out to you, man. And then, you know, it's just it's an instant trust factor there because um, at the end of the day, bro, we were both bulldogs. And I, and I know, you know, we talk about, you know, just just being a bulldog and what that entails and um, living that lifestyle, you know, just so it's, it's just like a mutual connection to me. Um, but yeah, bro, it's crazy. Right. And so, like, we got that network. I didn't I never I did deals with Dean. Before I even mm-hmm. met Dean, that was through my network, made me several thousand dollars. What else? Oh, I just met a dude who I was talking to you about before this at uh-huh. the event I was at. Yeah. I'll sell that dude deals. Yeah. Make thousands of dollars. Yeah. Right. So getting out and talking to people. My rental business with Kyle, mm-hmm. we made what was it? we made sixty thousand dollars last year. And okay. where'd I meet him? A meetup. A meetup. That's crazy. Yeah, man. Your network is your network. And so, so cliche, so cliche. Come on, with your own shit, bro. But it's so powerful. It what? is. And I was talking to Pace yesterday, and so he created his own little network inside his mentorship. Uh huh. Excuse me. And he was like, "My mentorship has gotten so big that people are in there dispoing deals, and they're making two hundred thousand dollars a month from networking in my mentorship and helping them sell deals." That's dope, though, bro. So it's kind of that's what you want. It's a community. That's that's kind of and he he's done a great job at branding that whole community and stuff like that. And um, obviously that's something that we look, you know, hopefully we look forward to being able to do with with this group here and being able to just continue to add value and you know stuff like that. And it's all what I'm. It's all his network. Mm-hmm. It's all his network. It's crazy, and his company blew up. Because of his network, blew up to astronomical uh, numbers because of his network. You know, and the people you're, yeah, like, you said, and a part of your network is, is obviously going to be the people that you surround yourself with. Um, but you, you got to make sure that you're surrounding yourself with the right people. How do you it's, find the right people? Uh, I mean, I feel like naturally, I mean, you're going to, if, if you're doing the right thing, like, bro, if I'm in the streets slanging dope, bro, I'm going to run into other dope, uh, other, uh, other other what dope dealers, you know, you know, doing a thing. And if I'm out there hustling and I'm freaking, you know, I'm one of the top top earners out there. I don't, even, I, don't, I don't even know the lingo for it, but you know, I'm one of the top earners out there. Chances is I'm gonna bump heads with the other top on uh, uh, earners out there. You know what I mean? So then we just gonna have a little power circle, <laughs> right? And so that you, uh, you, that's gonna be my circle. So if you're doing real estate, um, I'm gonna hang around and I'm gonna learn from people that are way ahead of me in a sense of they're where I want to be. Um, and so that's not to shit on anybody, you know, kind of we're, we're parallel. Like, I'm not trying to say anything like that or, you know, even with each other. I'm just saying, like, if you shoot, if you, if you have big goals and you, you surround yourself around people who are doing the things that you would love to do in the future um, and you're steady working towards that goal, though that's going to be your circle. And like, that's what you start to think is possible. And we were talking earlier today about like millions, yeah, like millions of dollars. And I was like, bro, they, when I got started out, I wasn't even thinking about that. And I didn't even know it was possible. Yeah. And then I thought we were thinking big six months ago. Mm-hmm. And then we start getting around more people. It's like, oh, my God, that's possible. Well, a million dollars is I mean, it's almost like a fear, bro. Like like everyone says they want to be a millionaire or everyone says that they want to make a million dollars. But when you really break that down, I mean, when you really break it down, depending on the product, it may not seem that big, but I mean, fuck, that's a milestone, bro. You know, just, you talk about where we come from just year one and you talk about wanting to make six figures, you know, you go ahead and do that. So then the next step is like, well, shit, I mean, might as well do a quarter million, right? <laughs> do 250. Well, once you do that, like, bro, like you can't shoot for five. Like, you know what I mean? At, by year three, you should be starting to figure out some systems and some ways to be able to make stuff a whole lot smoother where you should be able to do, you know, more than double that. And I mean, the momentum that comes from it too, right? Mm-hmm. The momentum of surrounding yourself with those people and then you're there. And then like how we talked about the social media, 
that pushes yeah. you. It's no different than the social media pushing you when your circle is a bunch of killers. Yeah. Everyone that's, in that's that circle. That's why I love being at the hub because Chris Williams is there. Chris Williams is there. I'm Williams there. there. Maritz is there. Sheesh. Carlos is there. It's around yourself with a bunch of killers. Killers. But then, like, it, it becomes regular, like, and it's unacceptable, and you can't show up the next time and not be killing it. Because mm -hmm. then, like, what are you doing? They're going to be like, well, why aren't, why aren't you here yet? Yeah. Like, we, we told you what to do. Are you going to follow it, or are you just going to sit there and drag your feet? Like, like I, I'm in a situation right now where it's like I'm, I'm, I'm entering into like a new, new realm in a sense of like a fix and flip, right? And so, um, funding that, um, learning what a scope, you know, scope of work. Like, I mean, I know, you know, I, I get it. Like, I know I have an idea of what a scope of work is, but we but don't like, get it, get I, it. You know what I mean? But like, in a sense of like, how do you document that? What does, I know it entails kind of like what you plan to do, right? A scope of the work that's going to be done, but like the formatting, like, you know, what are you highlighting? What are, like, how are you breaking it down? Like, you get what I'm saying? Like, I don't know that stuff yet. And so it's one of those things where you may feel dumb because you're like, man, how do I not know how to do a scope of work? But I've never, I've never been there. So now I'm in a good situation where I'm learning. Right. I'm learning about hard money. I'm learning about pulling uh, uh, private money to, to, you know, for gap and and how to structure that, you know, that note and send it to the title company and have them draft it for you. Like all that stuff is different, bro. Like interest only payments like it's all, you know, when you when you step out of wholesaling and you start trying to acquire and, um, you know, things like that and start trying to build a little bit like those. There's new things that come up that, that you're you're I don't know unaware of i guess and i mean but like who'd you learn you called up jason oh, you know sure. what, and that came from your network where'd you meet jason a meetup a meetup <laughs> <laughs> you know what i'm 100%, saying yeah and you're like hey bro like i don't i don't know how to structure this and like i call him whenever i have something and only, i don't get and you're only able to call him because we because we do the business exactly. you know we're not sitting back and like the first thing i'm thinking about is getting a hard money loan to go ahead and, and get my first flip in like no like i you know I've done deals and with wholesaling and you know, we started the Airbnb thing. So like we've done things to kind of prove ourselves to be able to reach out to someone and them not feel like they're wasting their time exactly. by going through this stuff with me. Hands down. I mean, everybody, I want to help everybody, but the people need to take the help. Like they need to take the action. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Jason is more than willing to help you. One, because you bring value to him in other ways. And two, he oh, knows so. you're just gonna you're just gonna go take it, run with it and Thanks, bro. And then you're on to the next. And, and, it, and so, oh, go ahead. Sorry. No, like you just don't waste his time. Yeah. Well, you can't, bro. It's a guilt. Like, <laughs> I'm about to call Jason. He's going to give me some information. I'm not going to do it. Like, you know what I mean? Like, that's crazy. You know what I'm saying? Because what happens when I really do need him, you know, another time? You know, at, at some point, it's like, it's like, it's the, what they say, the boy who cried wolf. At some, time, at some point, down. people are going to start coming. Um, but just, but just a, an idea of kind of like when we talk about your net worth, right. And so your network and we talk about like what comes from that. So a while back, Jason had met, mentioned something about, um, the business journal, right. He talked about it a long time ago. And I remember thinking like, oh man, Jason got it. I'm gonna get it. Right. If it weren't for him, it's going, you know, why would not, whether I read it or not, like the first step is just taking action. And I forgot and so he posted something yesterday and all I seen was business journal at the top of it. And the first thing I did was went to the damn website and subscribe to it. You know what I mean? Like, but had I not been surrounding myself around people like that, like I may not read that shit for six months, but again, just like our postcards and direct mail, it's going to come to your door. It's going to come to my email. At some point I'm going to open it and there's going to be some type of value. Once I kind of understand how to navigate the site and navigate the emails and the newspaper, right? And it's going to add value to my life in some way or another. But I wouldn't even have the opportunity to be able to do that. 100%. What's going on, Josue? Josue says he's ha happy to help us on our flip. Okay. Okay. And then Definitely. We, yeah, for sure. Reach out to me, man. I, definitely. I'll take uh, input from anybody, man. What's it called? He, he did some big flips out in the Bay. I don't discriminate. And then what's going on, Pritchard? Oh, shoot. Man, he's about to, be, about to be bouncing in a while, man. Going on, going on his little 40th birthday, uh, little trip to Mexico. Where? Let me guess. 
Is it going to Mexico? It's not going to Mexico, bro. It's way more exotic than that. How dare you? How dare you put down his fortieth birthday uh, celebration like that? Where are you going, old timer? Let me know where you going. <laughs> Places you only see on the Kardashians. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and then, <laughs> we'll we will do some deals together, Josue. And then what's going on, Dino? What up, Dean? Okay, Pritchard's going to the Maldives. Bro, that sounds like a movie. Like, I don't even know where that's at. Man. <laughs> <laughs> See, I need a little bit more exposure. Um, but I did want to answer uh, with, with Cletus because he said, he, uh, oh, I know, I man, I know I know that they're always willing to help. And I actually, I read that and I, and I felt bad that I didn't I'm, you know, do that. So I'll, I'll, call, anything, explain, I'll call and explain myself uh, uh, later on. This is just, just, just make me feel better. It has nothing to do with you guys. But think about the people who have commented on this. Uh -huh. We can because we know them, mm -hmm. we can call up and be like, hey, I got this going on. I yeah. need help with X. Yeah. And they will help you get a deal done that's going to make you thousands of dollars, maybe millions of dollars. For sure. Me and Dean, we're working one right now. Um, oh, can't really talk about it yet. <laughs> Still waiting on some offers to come in. <laughs> but it could be a potential six figure deal. Right, and that, and that's bananas, and that's all through yeah. knowing yeah. people. What's what else? Me going to the mastermind, mm -hmm. I'll make seven figures from going to that self storage mastermind from one person I met. And see, I still envy you for being able to go to some of these masterminds already. I mean, you're gonna go soon. You just gotta wait that's for that some, little one to point, you know. Point, yeah, at some point, bro, I might just have to get a nanny, a just traveling nanny to just take with me. I mean that. If you close that big deal, I feel like that should be. <laughs> what, sorry, when you close that big deal, that's like that's right, the next man. investment if that's holding you back. A freaking nanny, uh, and I want and I and I want a, a Spanish speaking nanny. You know, my kids are you know my kids are Mexican too. I need them to be able to be bilingual. I'm doing them a disservice. I I want to, I want to get a nanny and I want to get a full time homeschooler. Like I don't. Okay. That's what the goal is. That's what Campbell and them do, isn't it? Who? Uh, well, can't talk about them. Um, what's it called? <laughs> no, it's what um, my mentor does. Good He's dude, like, bro, dude, just get dude. two homeschool teachers. He's like, get a homeschool yeah. teacher and get a nanny. Mm -hmm. And then that way you can enjoy your kids. You don't have to scream at your kids when they don't know how to do math. Yeah. <laughs> you, and you know, the crazy thing about it is, is like we can like um, it's funny because like all your friends are like different in a sense of like where you pull from, if that makes sense. So like. Like with Jason's like the old head, right? Cletus and Aaron are like the old heads. You kind of like when you just you need to quit in and out. You know what I mean? You don't take too much of their time. Uh, Dean got just about, about as many kids as I do, <laughs> right? And Oscar and stuff like that. So then those are folks that I talk to when we talk about navigating with kids, you know, around our age and stuff like that. Um, and then it's just me and you, man, like whatever the fuck we talk about. I mean, but then they can still help, bro. Oh, like, for that's, sure, bro. I need all those conversations. I need bro. all of them. I need all. I need all the answers I to the crazy stuff that's going on in my life. Like, bro, how how are you navigating, Dino? I was like, Dean, how are you navigating two little monsters running around and running your business? Because he works from home, bro. You see how you see how I had to get to the hub real quick. But you, you got to get to the hub. <laughs> I, I only have one of them, and I'm like freaking out, like Zeno. Zeno, bro, you gotta Zeno, you gotta chill. Oh, you gotta chill, Chris. hundred percent. Chris, how I, many kids you got? He's at five. You know, you just have number five or number four. I think once you get past three, bro, it all feels like five, right? <laughs> just uh, set boundaries and, and keep with them. Yeah, bro, like, so you're a man of structure. You know what I mean? And so I think when when like someone like me, like I'm I'm not very organized. So when you talk about setting boundaries and stay and keeping with them, bro, I can't even keep up with, with workouts. <laughs> you know, we barely came up with a little chart for the kids uh, with some chores because they've been they've been playing uh, Roblox. And, you know, just like on any game, like you can buy like the T-shirts, you know, little accessories and stuff on the game. And they've been asking us for this stuff. And so we're like, OK, well, you know, my wife, we went good. We got a little chores chart. Right. And they don't have to do it. It's just one of those things like if you guys want to do this or you guys want to buy this, 
This is how you can earn the money to be able to purchase those things. And that's what we set up, man. Started that yesterday. How, how's it going? Are they? Oh, okay. Bro, like, bro, they knocked them. They've knocked them all. They, bro, they, as soon as they come home from school, bro, my son, uh, yesterday and today, has has checked it all off. He even told me, "Dad, did you take out the trash today?" I'm like, bro, I don't want no Roblox. <laughs> but so yeah, man, they, they really, you know, they really enjoyed it because it's it's not a pressure thing. It's not this is what you just is your responsibility every day. You know, what I mean, it's just like this is what you would need to do in order to earn. Uh, the money to be able to do that, but you know Tyson, he's 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 pretty savvy, man. He's like, only thing I didn't do was clean my room, but that's just because it's just one point. <laughs> and it makes it even worse because when we were putting it together, that's the number one thing we said. It was just like, man, oh my god, like, can't make him work too many points because he'll he'll like nickel and dime them. Like, okay, if I do this, this, and this on this day, this day, and this day, I'll be able to get. You know what I mean? Like that's just how yeah, that's just how he's wired, man. I mean, but you, I love how you're treating them like, okay, work for this and you get X. Yeah. Where a lot of people don't even get that. Like, they don't get that concept. Yeah. Well, so it's funny because, as again, in 75 Hard, we're doing um, with our reading. So my wife is reading the, the story of Chip and Joanna Gaines. Okay. Right. And so just kind of like how they met, I think it's the first book that they came out with. Um, and Chip had talked about, he had, I guess my wife was telling me that he dropped a line where he said he works every day like it's Saturday. And I guess when they first met, you know, for for uh, his wife, it didn't make sense because she was like Saturday, like, you know, we'd be chilling, you know, whereas Saturdays for him was like they got up super early. They were out working on the lawn, getting stuff done. Um, and then, you know, towards the, towards the evening time, it was like a treat in a way they'd go get ice cream or they'll go, you know, go go get McDonald's, whatever. You know, it was almost like a reward. And so love for him, Saturdays was just it was grind days. So he was just like, I'm gonna work every day like it's Saturday. Um, and that his parents were very like, whenever he would ask for something, it was just like, okay, here, here are things that you can do to earn those things. And so it was just like, it was never a no. And that was one thing that he referenced that his parents never told him, no, they told him what he could do to earn them. And I've always thought that was a dope concept. I like how I feel like you get trapped in creating a life that you don't want and like phrasing it in your head of this is what I have to do every day to where if you phrase everything, like every day is a blessing and I wake up and it's Saturday and I get to do what I want. And then you structure it that way, especially with what we do. Yeah. To where if I can set it up the right way, every day is a Saturday. Mm -hmm. 100%. So that's, that's kind of structure and balance is a myth. I just bring them everywhere I go. (laughs) Yeah. That's the other way around it too. I love what you do, Chris. I think Chris brings a different kid to the office every day. But that's so, dope, bro. Right? Balance. I mean, and, and it's not balance, but he brings them with him and he sits them next to him and then he's working. But and it I mean, is it, balance because, they get, I mean, bro, like, I feel like when I was little, when it came to my dad, like, it wasn't even like I, I needed my dad to just talk to me, bro. Like, I just wanted to be on his hip pocket. You know what I mean? Like, I just wanted to be where he was at. So I, I feel like kids are very, very more uh, simple. You know, they, they you, it gets to a point where they just they just want to be wherever you are. Like to this day, my son still tells me when I pick him up from school, like, "Hey, Dad, you gotta, uh, you do you gotta go look at a house?" And I'm like, "No, I'm I'm here." He's like, "Yeah, I'm like, chill, bro. Like, I need to be, I need to be looking at something." <laughs> it just makes you realize like how important you are to them, though, right? Yeah, for sure. I mean, it, and it's a blessing that we get to have our kids who want to be around us because it's what's how old is he? He's he five, seven, bro. Whew. Oh man, so you got five Ooh. more years till he doesn't want anything to do with you. Bro, got five more years for my foot's up his ass. Right? And he's <laughs> your foot's up his ass. He doesn't want yeah. anything to do with you. I'm dragging him with me, bro. You, you know, it's funny that we say that too as we're talking. It's just funny how this just all gets like kind of we kind of just going all over the place, but it all can tie back to, to, to your network, right? Because Chris is someone that we're around a lot, right? And so these are things that I see him do, you see him do. Right. And so it, 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 it directly correlates to some, some of the way that I how I act as a father. And yep. so I was actually bringing up because another person, uh, um, Carlos and uh, Martha Gomez, like, bro, they take their kids everywhere. everywhere. Right. And I mean, they, it, it ranges. They got them in high school all the way down to I think the last one ain't even in school yet. Right. And so um, they just closed on their first flip. Right. That, 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 that really expanded their mind on the things that they're able to accomplish. 
and they're posting pictures with them and like their kids at the title company chilling, taking a picture with in front of the plaster. You know what I mean? Like that's exposure. Like to me, that's that's is awesome, bro, to see it. Um, I, I love seeing it. The Gomez has a flock of, <laughs> has a flock of the, kids too. The Gomez <laughs> have a flock of kids, and I want a flock of kids. No, I don't. You really? Oh, you you guys are done. I want six. Yeah, I don't want six. I want six. You better get moving, bro. Wait, bro, I'm not. <laughs> If I can convince Kalani to pop one out every single year once we turn thirty, we'll be fine. Oh, just give it, just give it, just give it all up, huh? Just like no, like your life's over. You're gonna pop out a baby every year. I'm not, I'm you know, it. we had Tyson. Well, I feel like I feel like it was a long time ago, right? I was twenty. Found out we were pregnant with him at this chill. <laughs> <laughs> I was twenty three. My wife was twenty two, um, and he he was born uh, literally exactly a week after my birthday. So my birthday is April eleventh. His his uh, his birthday is April eighteenth, and so I had just turned twenty four. And I feel like since the, since the age of twenty four till I guess now, right at thirty one, I feel like it's just I, I'm just I'm ready to kind of I'm ready for the next chapter. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. But that's just because you know, and you and you're younger than me, so I mean, Zeno's what four? He'll be four in August. Okay, and, and you're how old? Twenty six. Yeah, bro. So I mean, shit, you started younger than me. So if you're gonna start popping out five more kids by the time you hit thirty. Bro, you you ain't doing shit till you forty. <laughs> so I mean, you know what I mean? Like, there's that. But at the same time, okay, by the time I'm thirty and I do have a nanny, and I can pay for that home, and like I can structure a life to where it's completely there, yeah. And I'm not worried about taking them with me, right? Building the business the way I want it to be, so I can spend more time with my children. Yeah. That's what I want. I want to be the dad who's like, we're going and doing stuff all the time. They can come see me work. But I see generally, how good that can be though. But honestly, like it's funny because when even when I brought it up to my wife, I was just like, and it was a wild even thing to bring up because I was just like, man, like we were they just thinking about like things that we want to do, and it's just like it's almost people were people had told us like at the end of the day, I don't think I can't remember the last time me and my wife has gone somewhere that's just me and her. I mean, we still haven't had a honeymoon. Yeah, that's tough. You know what I mean? So like 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 when you really think about that, it's just like okay, like you know. At some point, it's just like it'd be, and it's not even. You feel bad because I don't, I don't want to leave my kids. Like I want my kids to come with me, you know. But so it's just one of those things. You want to be able to go somewhere and be able to go spend the night at the time, you know, go have dinner, go see some things. Which you just you and your wife, your kids can still come. You know what I mean? But you just got someone watching them at the time, and that's in the discussion of like looking for a nanny or like just someone that when we travel, we take someone with us that we trust. And that's the hard thing too, right? Someone that you trust, you know, moms ain't ain't just giving that up. (laughs) You know what I mean? That's a process in itself. So if anyone has gone through finding a nanny that they travel with and stuff like that, I'd love to be able to hear your perspective on that. um, Kind of what you went through and kind of where you even started that process. Cause that's bro, where, where we come from. We don't hear about people having nannies. No. Like and and this isn't even to be rude, and I mean this in 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 the best way possible. But like that was like a white thing, bro. Like like you know what I mean? Like I it felt like I was I was cussing when I said something about having a nanny. You know what I mean? But then when you really think about it, like a lot of successful people, I mean, you got to be able to go do something, be able to work while you're there, or be able to you know spend time with your significant other, but still be able to have bring your kids with you without having to leave them back at you know at home. All right, well you got it goes into that like myth of balance and you're just trying to create something to where you get mm-hmm. the best of both worlds. Because even with your wife, bro, like you want to, you want your wife to be able to enjoy those things too. Like I can bring my family with me and I can go out to a mastermind, but, but, but who's chilling in the hotel room or at the Airbnb with the kids, with the two kids, with the three kids, with the three kids, bro, like my wife. So that's not a fun trip for her. Yep. You know what I mean? But she also wants to bring kids with our kids with us. So that's just, just to me, that's a great balance of being able to do that and still be able to have your family with you. Because then we can come right on back. We can spend all day with the kids and then have a night for ourselves. 100%. It's an honor to expose my kids to this. Even in the struggles, the ups and the downs, they're learning a different perspective to life, career, wealth, than they'll learn anywhere else. 100%, 100%. Chris. 100%. That's an awesome comment, bro. I wish we could like, like them, ping them. Right. Like, 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 like. <laughs> that, that's awesome, bro. And just yeah. to acknowledge Kalani, Kalani said, chill, she ain't having six kids. I'm, I'm still working on her, bro. I'm still, <laughs> I'm still working on her. Like, yeah, 
we're gonna have six of them. We're gonna have six. It's gonna be awesome. What do you so in five years, if money wasn't an issue, how would you structure it? How would I structure what? Your life. It's tough, bro. I love what I do. <laughs> I love what I do, but honestly, I would love, I don't know how I know I wanna I wanna um I know I want to be able to have a home for us that that we all are able to have the things that we love in them. You know what I mean? I, I am kind of a homebody in the sense of like, I want to be able to have our house be a place that we just love to be. And, and I'm not saying this big ass elaborate house, you know, just something just gets some space. Right. Um, I want to be able to kind of just get up and go. I, I would love to be able to exp expose my kids to just traveling. You know, that's something that's awkward for me to even say, because I, you're, you're talking about the first time I ever left California was, was on a flight to Hawaii when I was in college for the bowl game my freshman year. So my first flight was six hours. <laughs> first flight was six hours. You know what I mean? But like, I was I was nineteen years old. I think about that. The first time I you know I left California was nineteen years old when I got to college. That's wild, bro. Like it's still weird for me to see people go, like when you travel like back and forth to Utah and you're like going. I'm like, bro, that's crazy. Like you know what I mean? It seems like it's like uh, out of this world type thing for me. And so. I don't want that to be that way for my kids. I want to be able to be able to go somewhere and just just because we, you know, it's a place that we've always wanted to visit and and, and and enjoy those places. So that's kind of how I see my life, being able to just get up and just go, you know, kind of. I guess kind of what Kyle's doing at this moment, right? He, he loves what he does. He, he does his no business. Kids. He ain't got no kids, but I'm he just, you no know, kids. what I'm saying. But you know, we're gonna do what we got to do with having the kids. Um, but the concept of being able to go to spring training baseball games, like we love baseball, bro. So being able to go spend time in Arizona during spring training. Y'all weird for that. <laughs> I played center field, bro. You you really did, bro. Yeah. That's crazy. Um, the freedom to create experiences and the freedom to be present, bro. Yeah. I mean, right. Chris is dropping dimes. <laughs> like, bro, I want to, I want to, I want to go to Disneyland Tuesday through Thursday because everybody else is at work and school. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like that, that that's the kind of shit I like to do. I how do I want to structure mine? I want I want to have a nanny. In five years, I'll we'll start to have another kid. Mm -hmm. I'll have a nanny to like watch Xeno. Or, another chill pop up. Chill. Right. Another chill. <laughs> chill. Have five storage facilities. <laughs> right. I mean I struggle with this though, but it changes all the time. Like, how much money do I want? What do I want it to be like? I really want to be able to fly back and forth to Salt Lake whenever I want. Yeah. Spend as much time with my family as possible. So, my dad, I didn't tell you this, my dad just broke his fucking hip after he just had a seizure. Oh, and so, I'm spending the next month out in Salt Lake. Yeah. But, like, okay, now I'm spending, I'm just going back and forth whenever I want. It's not even an issue. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll come visit in Salt Lake, bro. We I've been watching this show on uh on Netflix. I think it is not is it Home Edit? Not Home Edit. It's it's some show. It's in Salt Lake City, and the mountains are gorgeous, bro. It's just like it just looks so clean over there, bro. Come out. I love. It. <laughs> you know what I mean? Just just to kind of just break us from something. You know what I mean? Just just to step out of our our normal day to day type stuff. Take For my life, on a flight in in you know. It's crazy how you think you'd live some elaborate life, mm -hmm. but now that like I know what's possible, like oh no, like I I travel a lot. And it's even, simple, bro. Even with a nanny, I'm for me. Even with a nanny, even if I wanted to travel the world, that sounds like a. It sounds impossible, right? Mm -hmm. If I have, with like three kids, right? Mm -hmm. What are we gonna have? Like, two these nannies. Are, these people. Then we have love, six. They love kids. Like you know what I mean? Like you you know how you go to preschools. Like I take my daughter to school and I still think yeah. her teacher's crazy. I'm like, you you like find joy. <laughs> you know, right. you, you like hurting cats for fun. <laughs> you like hurting cats for fun. You know what I mean? Like, so th th that's the type of personality you're talking about. You know what I mean? So like it's a true joy for them. And so um for me, I just, you know, I've always I always tell my wife, I'm like, I want an older Mexican, you know, Mexican lady. Who can just she can just throw down, <laughs> you know? Kids get great, you know, great meals, you know. They they get great stories, you know. I I just you kind of like you know I, I yeah that's just kind of how I've always seen like a nanny. You and know. to tie this all back into the network, 
I didn't even know it was possible to have a nanny, have a full-time homeschool teacher until I, until, well, yeah, until I had a mentor, I started going out and meeting people. It was like, oh no, like you don't need to do that. Just go do this, this, and this, and it'll structure the life the way you want it. That's the way we have it. Homemade tortillas, baby. Homemade tortillas. You know what I'm saying? You you feel me? Hey, hey, if they they ain't acting right, you know what I mean? What'd she say? Yeah. you know what I mean? I'm just I'm passive, I'm passive just like I own my wife. Like, what'd your mom say? What'd the nanny say? Do you do that when she here? All right, then you ain't do it. <laughs> do you do that when she here? <laughs> I'm trying to get her, get away on me. All right, bro. I think you got your walk. Yeah, bro. I'm gonna say let me get going because uh, we actually started a little bit late because of you, but whatever. We bro, you, just you know what? Up. Don't don't even put this on. Don't put this on me. <laughs> I got two workouts in to get, bro. You gotta get into workouts. Oh, for sure. So we'll go walk it, and when we get back, I hop on the Peloton. Oh boy! Sometimes I just like to grind that shit out. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you guys so much for tuning in. Thank you guys for interacting so much. For we'll sure, talk to you guys man. next week. Next week, what t- when we going, Strat? Bro, seven thirty. God damn! Can we do seven? I hoop on Thursdays <clears throat> at six thirty. Right, I need to get my 45 minute hoop session in. So you guys let us know, do you like 7 or 7:30 and do you rather would you rather have Thursday or Friday? I damn near want to start doing like Tuesday. Okay, so how about <laughs> after you guys watch this or if you're still on, go ahead and comment what day you guys would like for us to do the podcast and what time of the day works best for you guys. Um, and then from there, we'll just kind of just tweak it and let you guys know. Let's just let's just get a feel for kind of what the audience, how they feel like they it would it would best fit their schedules, and then we'll figure it out. All righty, guys. So thank you guys for tuning in with us, man. We, we thank you for all the you know feedback and just participating, all the participation and stuff like that. Um, make sure you guys follow us both on Instagram. They're both tagged on there. Um, and yeah, well, I'll at you. Wait, hold up. Oh, I wasn't supposed to close it out yet? No, bro. I mean, like, you didn't shout out mainline comps. Oh, man, it's down at the bottom. It's been there for the last 46 minutes. But you got to talk about it. Reading is fundamental. If you're looking to analyze deals, you're looking to take your business to the next level, go to mainlinecomps.com. Get your seven-day free trial. There you go. Go to Call Magicians if you guys want to make more money. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. All right. See you. Thank you for tuning in to the Free Agent Real Estate Investing Podcast. Don't forget to give us a five-star review. If you would like to stay in touch with Stratton and myself, follow us on Instagram. And please be sure to subscribe to our Free Agent REI Podcast YouTube channel and give us a thumbs up.